In this video, we're going to talk a little bit about unidirectional data flow and why it's a good idea to use in all of your projects. And I know usually, you know, if you're using MVVM, you don't have some of the things that we're going to work on in, in this video. It's kind of more, it's got a little bit of an MVI taste to it, a taste and a feel. But I think this is a great opportunity for me to kind of uh, get you guys to dip your toes in the water of MVI because I think you'll see that this is definitely the superior architecture. It is really just MVVM with some added organization. That's all it is. So currently inside of our view model, we have two sort of quote unquote use cases. This could be like considered use case number one, which is you know doing a new search. And we have quote unquote use case number two, which is getting the next page of results. I know like this, this isn't really use cases. These are just functions inside of the view model. But if we were like in the next course, for example, what I'm going to be doing is abstracting these out to individual use cases and then injecting them into the view model. The reason that we're not doing it in this in this course is because there's really just not enough logic in here. Uh, when we add the caching layer, you know, in the next course, there's going to be a lot more sort of logic in here. So then it makes more sense to kind of abstract these things out. So I'm, I'm just trying to simplify it a little bit, but just one wanted to introduce you to the idea of like, you know, this is a use case and this is a use case. So now how can we add some added organization to our view model, given that these are sort of quote unquote uh, use cases? Well, we're going to build something called a event class. So event classes are used to describe what are, what are the events that can happen inside of a particular UI. So inside of, you know, recipe list fragment, what are the things that we can do? Well, we can perform a new search and we can get the next page of results. Those are the things that can happen inside of of that view. So let's create a class to describe the things that can happen inside of that view. So right click on the recipe list package and create a new class named recipe list event. This is going to be a Kotlin sealed class. And if you don't know what a Kotlin sealed class is, don't worry, you're going to see an example right now. So just write sealed class recipe list event. And now we want to write the different kind of events that can happen inside of that UI. So for us, the first one is new search event. And this will be, it'll return a type of recipe list event and then just initialize that. And then we have another one named next page event and the same thing, recipe list event. Now keep in mind that I could have added a class identifier to this, but it's not necessary since this isn't taking any arguments. So suppose for example, uh, I was passing the query as an argument to this event, then it would make more sense to have a class identifier here, or you can use a data class also. You could do data class and then change this to a value. That would be like if we were passing parameters to the event, but for us, we're not. There is nothing being passed to our event. That's why we can just use the object identifier. This is just sort of like, think of it as like, a, it's basically an enum. It's an enum with extra properties, more flexibility. I guess that's a good way to put it. So now that we have our events here, now let's go into our view model and handle these events. So I'm going to scroll up to the top down below the init function and create a function named on trigger event. So function on trigger event, it will take an event as input and this will be a recipe list event. Now open this up and handle the different events that can happen. So we're going to do view model scope dot launch. The reason I'm doing view model scope is because I'm going to remove it from our use cases later on later in this video and then change these to suspend functions. So we of course need to wrap this in in a coroutine or launch a coroutine when we call these, these will be suspend functions. So now we want to do try and I want to catch the exception. So catch E and just do exception. And inside here, I can just print, you know, log E, uh, some kind of exception happened. I'll just do, you know, dollar sign E and maybe do also the cause. So do, whoops, do E dot cause. And we can get rid of this comma that's not needed. Now inside of the try, write when the event and handle the different events. So we have two events, new search event, just get an arrow, open this up. We can import the, get the static import for this just to kind of clean this up. Now I'm gonna copy this one more time and do a next page event. So we have two events, new search event and next page event. Now inside here, I'll call new search and inside here, I will call next page. So like I said, we're gonna be changing these now to suspend functions and we can make them private. So private suspend function, new search, we can get rid of this, whoops, get rid of that uh, view model scope since it's going to be called inside of the on trigger event function up here. This is giving me a warning too, because it's saying suspend functions can only be triggered from a coroutine. So I'm going to call on trigger event and do a new search event. And then that will take care of that error. Now scroll down and also do the same thing for next page. So do private suspend function next page, get rid of view model scope dot launch and tab this in. 
So at first glance, this might look like I really didn't accomplish anything. I basically just added, you know, a new function in here, which essentially did the same thing, but that's not true. But I know that this might not be clear until, you know, maybe the next course when we actually have the use cases abstracted out. The big kind of dividend payoff here is we have one way flow. This is unidirectional data flow. The only way to trigger an event in this view model is through the on trigger event function. And then the corresponding use case would be called and you know emit whatever kind of data to the UI. So here it doesn't really seem like it's doing that much because we have the functions in the view model. But like I said, in the next course, when we do database caching, work with the data store, we're gonna abstract these out to use cases. And what that's gonna do for us is allow us to test them very easily. So essentially what you'll have is you'll have the use cases abstracted out into their own class. And then we can write JUnit tests, just plain old unit tests. We don't need Espresso. We don't need to write instrumentation tests. And we can just test those individual use cases. We can test the thing that we put in. So like the input, in this case, it might be like the query, the page number, whatever. And we can test what is emitted from that use case. So you'll see this, uh, you'll see this in action, I guess, in the next course. So you're gonna have to wait for that. Now as a last step, we need to go into recipe list fragment. And there's gonna be a couple errors here. Whenever we called our you know, next page function or the uh, search function, this is these no longer exist because they're private. So instead what we have to do is we have to do uh, on trigger event. And then for this one, this will be the new search event. And then that should take care of that error. And there should be another error up here for, oh sorry, that should have been the next page event, not a uh, new search event. There should be next page event. And then do the same thing up here for new search. Just do view model dot on trigger event and do new new uh, search event. And that's it. So now we have sort of one, a one way street for our data flow coming from our UI. It's going to call the on trigger event function and then call the corresponding quote unquote use case to handle that event. So a nice sort of unidirectional data flow example. And also you got to see, you know, how you describe the different events that could happen in any particular view. So for us, you know, we have two events in this view, new search event and next page event. So now let's run this and just see that everything is working exactly as it was before. Really nothing has changed. So let's do a little test. Let's just scroll down, make sure the pagination is triggered. There's the pagination triggering. There's the next page of results. All right, that looks good. Now let's do a search. So I'll click the category beef up at the top here. Now scroll down, let's make sure that the pagination is also working. There's getting the next page of results. And then there it is, the next page of results comes in. So everything looks like it's working exactly as it was before we made these code changes. In the next video, we're gonna work on restoring the state after process death. And if you don't know what process death is, you're in for a treat. It's something that you need to prepare for in every single application that you build. It's sort of a, I guess you could say a flaw in the way Android apps work. There's a, sort of a unique case that can happen uh, called process death and essentially can put your app in a state that is not desirable for users. So we'll work on that in the next video. Don't forget your engagement. Don't forget to leave a like. Absolutely mandatory. These videos are free. Remember that. This, that's the least you could do. Just go down there and say, hey, Mitch, here's your engagement or, you know, something. Come up with something funny to say. It doesn't even have to be related to the video. It can be like, hey, Mitch, I ate cereal for breakfast today. It doesn't matter. Don't forget that like. I'll see you in the next video. Hey, what are you still doing here? The video's over. Well, since you're still here, I guess I'll show you the best Android courses that exist on the planet. I got all kinds of high quality courses. If you scroll on down on the homepage, there's the Jetpack Compose one that you're watching right now. There's that course. We have MVI architecture, if you've ever been curious about that. We have my classic powerful Android apps with Jetpack architecture. This shows you everything from, uh, well, the focus on this one is pretty much database caching. caching. We get data from a real API, we cache it, we uh, basically design an app to work when there's no network connection. That is what this project is all about. We have some UI testing, another UI testing, Hilt, which uh, we actually went over in this course. We got clean architecture. This one's probably the best, this is definitely the best course on my website. If you are a professional or you are looking to get into the industry, the skills that you learn in this course are absolutely fundamental. This will give you a big edge in any job environment, whether you're applying or you're already at a job and you wanna just improve your skills. This is a really, really, really high quality course. It's hard, your, your brain might explode while watching it, but you will learn a lot. You'll learn a lot of really, really fundamental skills you know, anything from getting data from the network, caching data, designing different layers, abstracting out the different layers so that you can write unit tests, uh, espresso tests, so UI tests, 
dagger, navigation components, everything. It's beautiful. Definitely this is the best course on the website.